An anomalously active way to end August in the weather department across Texas. It's honestly going to behave more like October than it is August. A lot of storm chances over the next five days in a strong cold front. Let's talk about it in this Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> there. It's Thursday, the 28th of August, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. Thanks for taking time out of your day to pop on in for some Texas weather information. We're going to try to go through this quickly, and I'm going to cut out some of the more typical content we do just to keep this thing on a manageable level. As always, after this video premieres, you are welcome to use the chapter selector below to get the information you'd like. Also, hats, cool. I got a box of them. I don't want a box of them anymore. Y'all want some hats? Head on down to the Texas Storm Chasers store to pick yours up. In fact, if I'm smart, I'll tag it on this video. I did not yesterday, so we'll see. It's half and half sometimes with me. Let's get started. Here is the high-res rapid refresh model for this afternoon and evening. We're likely going to see thunderstorms encroaching on the Red River by this afternoon in Texoma, northeast Texas. Storms already underway in Oklahoma and Arkansas. That's going to push an outflow boundary southwest to the Red River into northeast Texas, and we also have a stalled frontal boundary in those areas as well. Those are going to act as focal points for new storm development late this afternoon into this evening. Some of those storms in northeast Texas this evening may be severe with the risk of hail, damaging winds, and even a non zero threat of a tornado. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Otherwise, going into tonight and tomorrow morning, thunderstorms may continue in the Arklatex and East Texas, the Piney Woods, the Toledo Bend Reservoir area with locally heavy rain, maybe the opportunity unfortunately, for some flooding. Going into Friday afternoon and evening, we're expecting thunderstorms perhaps to continue in southeast Texas and east Texas, and we may also see new thunderstorm development occur and move across the panhandle in west Texas. Uh, and that's going to begin a more active spree of storms. Friday afternoon, we're also expecting scattered storms in the Guadalupe Mounds, Davis Mounds, the Big Bend, and then going into tomorrow night and Saturday morning, yeah, again, storms panhandle west Texas, the Permian Basin, northwest Texas, the big country, moving into north Texas and the Concho Valley. This is August still, right? Who knows? Here's a severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. We have the possibility of scattered severe thunderstorms late this afternoon, this evening, in northeast Texas near that boundary and stalled frontal uh, boundary as well. Uh, and again, the most intense storms may produce large hail up to the size of golf balls, damaging straight line winds over 60 miles per hour. And because we have those boundaries in place, uh, even though it's late August, mama nature don't care. We're going to have a little bit of an extra low level wind shear. We can't totally rule out a tornado in northeast Texas late this afternoon, this evening. The overall risk is very low, but it's not zero. So we'll see what Mama Nature decides to do. But uh, farther west, the potential for isolated severe storms also extended along the Red River back through Texoma into parts of northwest Texas. The overall severe threat should decrease going into late this evening, but we do expect storms to continue across east Texas overnight to Friday morning. Here's a look at the upper air pattern going over the next week. You can see the cause of this right here is that northwesterly flow. We're right on the edge of that deep upper level trough across the eastern United States, bringing fall weather to them. And then we have that kind of heat dome still in effect, the ridge across southwestern parts of Texas down into Mexico. We're right on that northwesterly flow, and that's allowing these overnight thunderstorm complexes to move southeast from the plains, Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and also a allowing some of these cool fronts to make it down into the state, which also tend to help bring additional thunderstorm activity. That's going to continue over the next week. In fact, by this time next week, this model is indicating a more substantial upper-level storm system may move across the southern plains, and that in itself could bring thunderstorm chances. Here is the European weather model taking us through the weekend early next week. And guess what? You can see daily thunderstorm chances continue in several regions of the state. We're going to have a pretty gnarly cluster storm Saturday night into Sunday, moving across the western half of Texas. And then going into next week, it looks like we'll probably have thunderstorm chances continuing, though we may see slightly less active weather hanging into Tuesday. 
But again, late next week, we'll probably have another round of storms. I'll let this play out. This is Saturday afternoon, hanging into Saturday evening. You could see storms moving south, southeast, and a big old cluster across the state heading into Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon with locally heavy rain, the potential for some flooding. Uh, some of those storms may also be strong. Here's the forecast rain totals over the next five days, and again, these are going to vary drastically, so don't take them verbatim. Don't expect to get exactly 3.2 inches of rain in Turkey, but again, you can see a lot of the state expecting one to three inches of rain through Tuesday morning with locally higher amounts certainly possible, especially if you get more than one heavy thunderstorm. Uh, lightest rain right now, the Rio Grande Valley, around a tenth to a quarter of an inch. The heaviest rains, Panhandle, West Texas, and the Arkla, Texas, East Texas, the Golden Triangle, we could see two to four inches of rain with locally higher amounts, which means, guess what? Uh, yeah, definitely not your typical way to end August. Flash flood outlooks. These are like the severe weather outlooks, but for flooding potential. Isolate to scattered flash flooding possible, especially tonight in northeast Texas, east Texas, the Arkla Tex. Uh, isolated flash flooding possible far western parts of the panhandle around Dalhart. Heading into Friday, the potential for isolated to scattered flash flooding, Panhandle, West Texas, the Guadalupe Mounds, and Far East Texas with isolated flash flooding possible pretty much everywhere else. Heading into Saturday and Saturday night, we're going to have to keep a close eye on the Panhandle, West Texas, the Permian Basin. Uh, northwest Texas into the big country Concha Valley again for that cluster of storms. We could have very heavy rain out of that, so at least scattered flash flooding possible. We may see that risk increase a bit depending on trends over the next few days. Sunday, almost the entire state has at least the chance of isolated flash flooding with the borderland and far west Texas around El Paso to Van Horn possibly seeing a higher risk with monsoonal moisture and some moisture coming in from a remnant tropical storm in the Pacific, hanging into Monday, guess what? Same story. So we definitely have quite a bit of weather to deal with over the next seven days. Today, high temperatures, triple digits, big country, north Texas, Texoma, uh, eastern 75% of the state, even the southeastern 80% of the state, really. We're looking at upper 90s, near 100 degrees this afternoon. Uh, and that is before we have to deal with storm issues. Going into tomorrow, cool front moves south with those rain chances. Highs only in the 80s along the Red River, northeast Texas, the Panhandle, west Texas. Everyone else is still in the 90s to triple digits. 101 in San Antonio, 100 in Austin, 106 in Laredo, 102 in McAllen, 101 in Del Rio, 98 in El Paso. Going into Saturday... Upper 70s, 80s, northeastern half of Texas, southwestern half of the state still in the 90s to low triple digits. Sunday, cool front shifts even farther south. We're going to have highs in the upper 70s, low 80s, northern two-thirds of Texas, with 90s and triple digits confined to the Rio Grande Plains, deep south Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, and then on Monday, even deep south Texas cools off a few degrees, still upper 90s, but everyone else mainly in the upper 70s, 80s to right around 90 degrees. So we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on things here over the next five days and in today. Okay, so we're going to actually have chasers out and about today along the Red River, keeping a close eye on storms. We'll have severe weather updates as needed this afternoon and evening, and even if we need to do live severe weather coverage for tornado warnings, we'll deal with that. Hopefully not, but it is what it is. Mama Nature going to do what Mama Nature is going to do. You can always keep a close eye on the sky with a free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps to your device, and one day I'll add a QR code over here, but that doesn't really help much for most folks watching on their cell phones anyway. Uh, and we've got interactive weather radar on that. We've also got radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar. Frequent updates on our social media channels, the community section here on the YouTube channel. And again, expect video updates this afternoon and evening. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. Thanks for popping in. We'll keep you informed. Have a good one. God bless.